great. That was a bit of free there. Didn't cost much to play that, did it? Uh, this is Simon Pink on Poppy Land Radio. I'm joined by one of my musical heroes, Mr. Alan Fish from the band Egypt. Check them out if you've not heard them. Um, Alan's played with lots of very famous, well-known musicians in, in his time. Um, you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, you played with uh, some of the guys from Free, um, but also you mentioned Alexis Corner, who is, you know, the mainstay of, of blues. I remember listening to him, his radio show back in the sort of uh, 80s, uh, starting off with a stumble. I wish you start off with a stumble by Peter Green. Um, and uh, you, you sort of uh, join up with him uh, at some point so tell us a little bit about Alexis Corner and what you've done with him yeah it's only just a, a few gigs we did like the um the marquee in its early days and one or two of the blues clubs around London Ronnie Scott's I think one of them and uh yeah we, we just uh, did some backing with him and doing with was as as you do with the blues guys they just play away and um you, you fit in where you can so yeah it, I think he had a seven string guitar at the time it's very okay. unusual Used to be called his nickname was Spider, wasn't it? Spider Corner. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, we, we just we didn't do massive tours, just a few gigs. But that was just before the early days of free, which was very it was a very exciting time. But, but later on, I did um, bump into uh, the guys again um, when I was doing an album with Tony McPhee and um, Billy Boy Arnold. Um, you know, the Chicago blues guy used to be harmonica player with uh, Bo Diddley, and we did a, a whole album. But, uh, two albums for Red Lightning Records with them. And then I think, um, I'm sure Alexis Corner came down to the studio and put one or two little bits on, on the album as well. I see it, the album's called Checking It Out. It's still a very, very popular album at the moment. I've heard the album. I was um, in tour, <laughs> on tour in Germany and one of our mutual friends happened to play it to me. Uh, yeah, and it's still, it's, it's certainly up there. It's a fantastic album. So yeah, we're worth, worth checking it out it uh, as it were. So yeah. It wouldn't be Udo, would it? It might well be Udo, yes. Uh, from, uh, from, yes, quite a character, isn't he? We better yes, not get, we, this is a family show, uh, Alan, so we better not mention too much about Udo. But what, what no. a hero he's, he's like, he's like, he's like my, my surrogate dad in a way. I, yeah. I love the guy. Um, anyway, yeah, moving on. Um, some more people that I've heard that you've, uh, played with, um, Motorhead or, or Lemmy in particular. I've seen lots of photos with him, so I guess there must be some connection there yes when i was with a, a band called dumpy's rusty nuts for a few years um a regulars at the uh the marquee in wardour street uh lenny would always turn up the gigs and jam with us well you could probably seen some photos of us on the stage there together and afterwards we always go across the road to the um uh what's it called sam Barrett's club right opposite and you know uh, lenny would sort of ensconced on the on the fruit machine in there and we'd just Sort of while away the night together. Uh, he, was, he was a great bastard, you know, a really, really good guy. And uh, we met up a few times in our journeys around Germany. Yeah, I think the last time was in Hamburg. Uh, yeah, um, Hamburg and then Berlin. And uh, Motorhead were playing at that time in the same, same city as we were. So uh, we, we did chat amongst other things, have a bit of uh, a night, a bit of a session. But then he moved to America. So we didn't really see very much of him after that. Wow, that's a, I should have asked you who you hadn't played with because you played with everything, everyone, every, <laughs> every band out there. there. There's one other, other one that I just wanted. I, I know you haven't played with them, uh, but I've got some uh, some connection with the Beatles that you, you've yeah. uh, played. Tell us a bit about that, Alan. That they stopped off at um, Singa- in Singapore when I was there, and uh, just a, uh, as all bands did, the Kinks and Manfred Man, everybody on their way to Australia, and then just did a show. The Stones were there. We did one. With them um, just uh, did one at, at when we were early early bands on the bill um, before the Beatles came on later. You know, that was, it was about twelve bands on and all. So that was at Singapore um, Badminton Hall. I think it was, oh my like that. goodness, that's amazing! <laughs> did you get to sort of meet them, say anything to them at all? Yeah, we just had a chat um, in the you know, in, in the hotel afterwards, and uh, just I mean, at the time it was very very early days. Um, I, I did see them. Prior to that, in the, um, the Wembley uh, Empire Pool, um, doing a show down there, uh, one of the NME poll winners concerts, and uh, just had a quick hello to them there, but never dreaming I'd meet up with them later on in Singapore, you know, because when they're very, very, when they were just becoming well known. Well, it may be a bit cliche, but they are one of my very favourite bands. So I'm going to take a quick break. And while we're rushing off to the loo and doing all our things off air, um, we're going <laughs> to stick a Beatles track on. 
آقا بایی 